welcome to the Beyond Cinema studio here, Adil, Bilal. Um, firstly, congratulations on being here. I, I know, like, obviously, TIFF is such a massive platform for a movie, and also for you guys having kind of made a film from outside the system, pretty much, um, and your first time in North America, it's like, it must be a whirlwind. What's going through your head in terms of, you know, just since, since finishing this feature and the good news that's followed, what's the spin like? Finally, we're here, man! <laughs> Finally, we in a long time since we were child. We, we knew that we, we would go international, so... Finally. Our, our big nightmare is that we will be stuck in Belgium forever. You know? yeah. that our, our movies will only be, only be seen by our family. <laughs> but yeah, now it's going international and some other people can see it. And, uh, it's, try, it's cool. I try to go, not to go crazy. Yeah, because sometimes I want to flip out, but yeah, I keep it. Just cool. make freaky noises, you know. Like, <laughs> yeah, you know, ah! it's interesting though that you say like the first time in the North American continent. Obviously, your hat is already representing a yeah. Brooklyn. The movie has references to the Bronx and yeah. Yeah. different places. Is that just the way you were brought up as like kind of consuming U.S. We, culture? We yeah, grew yeah. up with with Hollywood. We wanted so. that, those movies, Hollywood movies by Spielberg or Tarantino or Oliver Stone and Spike Lee. They were the movies that really inspired us and gave us the, the love of cinema. And that's why when we studied movies, we wanted to do movies like that. Although they all, our teachers said that it was unrealistic because we're in Belgium. <laughs> uh, but, well, uh, well, that's so. the thing. It's like you may have heard that, but then like when it comes to funding the film, it's like, the Belgian, uh, Belgium from Flanders, Brussels Region Fund, the Brussels yeah. Tax Shelter. It's obvious that the country got behind you yeah, in yeah. making this film. Was that, so was that a difficult process or was it actually a pretty easy process? Well, it depends. Uh, in film school, it was difficult because they, they really didn't uh, take us seriously <laughs> because they, we were funny guys. So. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, but the good thing is the, the stories that we are telling, those stories aren't really told in Belgium because if you watch television or just, you know, feature films, you would think that Belgium is white. So Antwerp, Brussels, Ghent in mm. movies or on television are, is white. And uh, there are no public fi figures of an other origin than just pure white Belgium. And um, it's and not a representation of what lives in the country yeah. or what's on the street of what's the reality. Yeah. And that's so why, the kind of yeah. stories that we tell are new. And, and that's why they, they really funded us because they, they thought that's now a, a new voice and, and a new kind of movie. And, yeah, and it's in the same spirit as, as movies of Spike Lee, like Do the Right Thing and Clockers. Or, so for us, it was a great story to tell it in a way that Spike Lee would do it. But then our version. Have you managed to show it to a Belgian audience yet? Uh, not yet. We, we had a sneak preview with 15 people uh, <laughs> because they didn't know it was black. <laughs> but uh, not yet. So the world premiere will be here in, in It's the first in time Toronto. we unleashed the movie to an audience. Wow. So it's yeah. really exciting. It's going to be really interesting being able to, like, especially to bring it home and see what the reaction is, given how you're saying that it is truly kind of a new representation or a representation of a new type of Belgium as well. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, I think it's going to be a shock because it, there, have, there has never been a movie like that in Belgium. So Does that also make it easier to shoot in Belgium? Did you find like, I mean, all the trains and everything, was that, was that all permitted or was that all well, guerrilla filmmaking? <laughs> like what's the, is yeah, it the easier? To make this movie was like going into war. but. Like making movies always go into war, but this was really rough. Yeah. Uh, we went into neighborhoods where they don't like the camera, because if they see the camera, they know they're gonna portray us in a negative way. So we really did research, and 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 we had some troubles on the set, and it was not. It was only one or two kind of people, you know. The, there was just uh, it was just I mean, one or two elements of the community that started to fight with us and throw eggs and bottles and, 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 and stones and, 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 and wanted and to kill us and pull a knife. And, <laughs> but, you know, once we talk with them, you uh, explain what you're doing and who you are, then it's chill, you know. They even say sorry, but uh, in the yeah. beginning it's, it's tough. But also, yeah, you, you know the permits in, in Belgium? Now, there are a lot of productions, so you know, they, it's, they gave it's, us... But the, 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 also, the scenes, the, 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 the places where we wanted to shoot, like in the metro, or the, it's not easy to shoot there. We, we, it's like guerrilla style of filmmaking. Yeah. yeah, you just have to shoot in the hours where they're really using it. They're not going to block or anything. You just go there and, and you... We didn't have the every, money to block things. Yeah. <laughs> you ask everybody not to look into the lens of the camera. Everybody's yeah. that, that's there. We go, you know, when we make a movie, we go till the dead. So it doesn't matter. Nobody can stop us. 
because even though we, we don't have the, have the permits or something. And it seems like the, though that you took those risks knowingly as well. It's like you didn't go and try and cast actors that you knew could play the roles and take them to that place. You tried to find the people there. Like why, like, you know, I get that you want to make things as authentic as possible and luckily, you know, you found some amazing people, but that was a huge gamble as well. well yeah, it if, was if, 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 you know, film schools or acting schools were full of blacks in Morocco, then yeah, obviously we would go first there. But as I said, you know, movies and television exist. white, so you don't have in those schools professional uh, ethnic actors. You really, you have to find them on the streets. Yeah, we uh, knew that the, the movie will stand or fall with the actors. For us, was it was the core of the movies to find those diamonds. Yeah. And so we went on the streets. Uh, and, and, and get, gathered like 450 young people. And we know we come, we know that where we know there's a lot of talents, but they never are shown. And this is like the first time that you will, in Belgium they will see there's, there's a lot of talent do you think you'll in also, the underground. Yeah. Do you think you'll also inspire these kids um, to go ahead and pursue a career in this field? Yeah, as well? yeah. our dream would be that, you know, there, we have 16 actors in the movie that never played in a movie before. Uh, and also, then most of them don't have, you know, don't don't t don't learn that at school or something. And we hope that they will play in other movies, really professionally. So and that's uh, why, you know, we, we saw so much talent. We had to cut down to sixteen actors, but there was a lot of talent. And we have for each role, we had five options. So we start. We, we we made our own casting bureau, and it's the first casting bureau in Belgium. It's called Hakuna. Uh, where you f where That's you see Hakuna these these Matata. other kind yeah, of talents, Hakuna Matata. <laughs> Hakuna Matata, you know, no yeah. worries. <laughs> yeah. yeah, And so, and that's the thing as well is like the film that you made is representative of a place, and it's but it's also very timely, which is also what Spike Lee had going for him when he made his early films, and what exists now is there's such an awareness of culture clashes, there's such an awareness of the refugee problems that are existing exactly. currently, yeah. um, and that's going to going to be more current for the next 10, 20 years plus, right? Yeah. yeah, yeah. So you really, but when you make a film, you also have to become advocates for those sorts of issues. You know, when you're writing a film and like, even if it's like a gangster film or a gang film, you know, then and that has a serious tone underneath it or is representative of something, you then will end up being asked questions about. Okay, what do you think about the refugee crisis in Europe? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know, we get we can give our, our opinion about that, but uh, as filmmakers, we're film extremists, you could say, and uh, we will always be be more comfortable in expressing our views into a feature film than really, you know, we might say something and then the next day we might say the entirely different <laughs> stuff, and but give us a story that we can tell uh, in, in cinemas and that's that will be our view on certain issues. And I think it sounds like it's obviously coming from a personal place as well. Um, and when we spoke a little bit off camera before the film, it really seems like not only did you rely on the communities, but on your own families to really kind of pull this together as well. Um, how, like, managing to put so much value on the screen, um, tell us a little bit about those family connections, including the fact that the film is dedicated to, to one of your mothers. <laughs> my, your my mother, yeah. So can you tell us about why that was important and also the involvement in your family uh, in this film? Behind well, the film? There's something about you know Moroccans in Belgium. Mor Mor Moroccan people are very, you know, family-like. You know, it's really always the con the connection. I mean, if we would meet Moroccans now on the street, they would be brothers right yeah, away. You, you know, know, even if it's you a brother, know him, like, you and, don't know him, but you know he's yeah. a brother. <laughs> so that's that's the way we we also we we make movies. Everybody from the crew and the cast are brothers for it's us. Like family, like family. Like, and that's also why they fight till death for us. You know, uh, we, that's why you yeah. know that's when you know that you make a movie that yeah. goes beyond yeah. what, yeah. what a normal movie is. Yeah. And for us also, our family supports us. And for, for, for me, my mother, Lara Ahmad, who died during the pre-production of the movie, this movie, uh, well, she, she produced our first short movies in film school. Like she gave the money and stuff like she, that. She opened yeah. the door for yeah. us to, to, to be able to do what we ra do so, right now, to make movies. Yeah. So yeah. We will, for each movie, we will thank her. Yeah. And, and also, my, yeah, my dad, 
makes food for the movie. <laughs> My dad played played dad of Marwan in his the movie. Brother, <laughs> his brother plays also. Is a, is I told ex- my dad. Extra I told movie. my dad just act like you're talking to me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and and it's that kind. Yeah, that's how, how we 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 cannot work with uh, with people if it doesn't get personal. We really have to have this personal connection. Whether it's our, yeah, obviously our own family, but everybody has to become in a certain way family of us. Yeah. And that was the best. And obviously the kids in the film go in a slightly different direction than what their parents would have hoped for. Um, you may have started out in that path, but it sounds like you found <laughs> acceptance from your own family. Yeah, well, there are, if you study movies, it's, it's a weird thing to study, especially <laughs> in Belgium. <I> know, <laughs> even even yeah. though if you're, you're a white guy and go to movies, you do art, yeah. it's difficult. Because but we have the... We are Moroccan, so it's even more difficult. Yeah, they, they want you to study normal stuff, you know, to be a lawyer or to be a doctor. But something that will earn money. <laughs> uh, but if you say, yeah, I'm going to do art and movies, there's like, yeah, where's the money coming, man? <laughs> well, it, it, seems like, it seems like the country itself is providing those funds to people like you to try something different. So that's going to be pretty admirable, a good first step. Yeah. And for you guys, your big first step over here enjoy being on the continent and yeah. uh, and all the things that you've grown up kind of watching and, and seeing on screen. Yeah. Um, and thanks for coming and spending a few minutes with us. Thanks, thank man. You, thank thanks, you. Thank you. Thank Give you me a hug. Give me a hug. Come on, man. So, Come on, homeboy. You're family too, man. You're family too, bro. <laughs> thanks, guys. All right. No problem. Yeah. <laughs>